Hello guys and welcome to TG on the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we got the knife ending. We were unfortunately, both metaphorically and literally, stabbed in the back. And in this episode, we once again have to start all over and start going through looking for a new route and hopefully getting a new ending this time. So first thing that I do want to talk about is I actually watched a speedrun of this game. Uh, on my own, and I actually want to check something out because I saw something in the speed run, and I'm not really sure if that's if it's actually something or if there's context that I'm missing for it. But apparently, there's a different sort of uh, combination for the suitcase. I checked this out in the remake, and it didn't do anything. Uh, so normally this is 7485. Let me try typing in 1115. Okay, now I'll have to do some research after this because I saw a speed run that did the. You know how there's the memories of escape that you unlock after you beat an escape room? I saw that someone was doing a, I watched the world record speedrun for that, and they input a different code that actually really surprised me. Uh, it was like 1115 for red, and then it was like 1121 for blue. I'll have to go ahead and look that up and see what that is, uh, if that's just like a thing for memories of the escape, which would be kind of weird if that's the case, because it's supposed to be the memories of the escape. You know, you're supposed to be playing through the same thing and, you know, trying to get a faster time, I guess. So that'd be quite weird. Another thing that I want to talk about quickly here, uh, as we're escaping this room, is I'm actually going to be going back on my word uh, on something. Like, it's not something like I promised it would happen, and in the long run it doesn't, it doesn't really matter too much, but in a previous episode, uh, at the very beginning of uh, while we were, I think it was like episode 15 or something like that, I said that the next route that we were, we were going to be doing, this one, we would be going through the number 5 door for our first uh, decision there. That's actually not going to be the case for this. Instead, I'm going to be going through the 4 door once more. Uh, that's funny, it kind of rhymed there. But I'm going to be doing that because... After this ending that we're going to be doing, there are two major endings after this that we'll be going through, and one of the major endings uh, requires that you go through the five door, and I think that it would be much better from a narrative perspective if I saved going through the five door for that ending. Uh, heh, <laughs> wordplay, save going through the five door for that ending. But yeah, I'm going to save going through that door for later. And, you know, that'll eventually be a big thing. Uh, so once again for this route, we're going to be making our first new decision after... Uh, we're going to be making our first new decision at the 3, 7, and 8 doors. Something that I also want to do is, and I might have already started posting them, uh, is I want to start posting videos of the remake for this game on my second channel. Uh, just so that anyone who wants to see the differences can go ahead and see them. I'll do those videos without commentary, because I don't really know if I'd have anything interesting to say about them that I'm not already saying in these videos. So this Let's Play that you're watching right now, the DS Let's Play, uh, is just going to be my main Let's Play of this game that I'm going to be doing. And then... And I don't even know if I'm actually going to be doing it, but on my second channel, I'll start, uh, I'll maybe start posting, uh, you know, a playthrough of the 999 remake. Speaking of the number 9, uh, I've noticed that I say the words number 9 very weirdly. I, like, a normal person says it, like, number 9, but I, like, tr my brain tries to fuse it into one word, so I'm just like, number nine. It's very weird. It's something I noticed when going back through editing. Uh, when, speaking of edit, editing, I've noticed that editing videos is 
something that makes you realize a lot of your own faults in terms of speech. For example, I hate how much I say the words like, um, and uh as, you know, filler words. I also say you know a lot. It's something that's probably not too noticeable for most people, but whenever I go back and, you know, start listening to my own voice, uh, it's just super weird. Santa and, uh, June, you think you could give me a hand here? The pun was a little too on the nose, but the mood was still grim. Both Santa and June lifted their left hands silently. He verified, and she followed suit. 5 plus 3 plus 6 equals 14, 1 plus 4 equals 5. They'd fulfilled the conditions. They were to, If they were to pull the lever on the side... One thing that I do hope for this Let's Play is I hope to god it's 9 hours long, because that would be so perfect and so funny. I think it will be probably about that, like 9 to 10-ish hours. Uh... So maybe once I finish this and it's nine and if it's nine hours long, uh, also let's get this incorrect. It was something about how more than six people could pass through. No, wait, that was wrong. It was on the tip of Junpei's tongue when Lotus beat him to the punch. All those who enter must leave, and all those who enter must contribute. That's what the letter said. In other words, no less than three and no more than five. Exactly. Snake inclined his head toward Lotus. But yeah, if if this is nine hours long, then that means that if you're, uh, that p if you wanted to, you could watch this Let's Play starting at like 12 a.m. or 11.30 or whenever it starts, whenever the Nonary game starts in-game, or whatever time the game starts, and you could end at 6 a.m., which is when this game will, of course, end. So I think that would just be perfect. So as of the date of recording this, which I know this is going to be posted way later in the future, but I'm currently recording this on August 23rd. I know this is going to be posted in like early September, so that's crazy. But uh, recently there was the trailer, there's a new trailer for the Persona 3 remake, and my god, it looks incredible. I am so pumped for it. Anyways, 2 plus 2 equals 2. Two. It would be two. And Junpei gets it wrong in the exact same way. So not too much funny dialogue there, but eh, whatever. And once again, we will be going through door four. We'll go through door five one of these days. But yeah, we are actually getting uh, semi-close to the end of this game. We've got two endings. And... Uh, there are five total in total that we're going for. Uh, of course, there's the sixth dummy ending, but most people advise not to go after that one. That dummy ending is actually the first ending that I got when I first played through this game. Uh, funnily enough. Uh, because I just managed to pick all of the right stuff to go down that route. Uh, and so the dummy ending, of course, is... An ending that you get when you go on the true on the route of the true ending, but you accidentally, but you haven't gotten all of the stuff that you need because like you need to get another ending in order to uh, actually unlock the true ending. Whoop! Did not mean to click on the Funyarinpa. Also, there's some funny dialogue. I think this, this that vase looks expensive. I wonder how much we could get for it. Are you going to steal it? <laughs> so that's funny. So you need to get a separate ending to get the true ending, and if you haven't gotten that ending yet, then you'll just get the dummy ending. I won't say what it is because that's sort of... I won't say the name of the ending because that's sort of spoilers. But... But yeah, I got that dummy ending. So I pretty much went down the true route my first playthrough, and on my second uh, go around of this, I got the other major ending, the one that we haven't gotten yet. And then on my third uh, go around, I got I got the ending that I'm currently going for right now. 
So we're kind of going in reverse order for my actual, for my actual original, like, personal playthrough. Uh, do you believe in, in, in that sort of thing? You know, curses and stuff? Uh, I'll say that I do this time. Well, yeah, I guess, I guess so, to a certain extent. Junpei scratched his temple. What about you? No, I guess that's kind of a dumb question. Yes, I do believe in curses. And, of course, we keep going. That mummy, the priestess, supposedly she was special. What do you mean? Well, supposedly she was really... Okay. It's kind of weird how that was the only dialogue that was new. I don't know if that really added much, but whatever. There's one thing that I will praise the 999 remake for. It's that the voice actors are really good. It's just, you know, they don't really get to shine much because the writing in the remake is kind of eh. But during one of the upcoming endings, uh, there's a part where Junpei has to scream a lot, and the English voice actor for Junpei does a really good job. Like, genuinely, he is really good, and he actually, the English voice actor for Junpei, I think, adds a lot of personality uh, to Junpei. So yeah, Junpei's voice actor is really talented. Uh, when he's given some really good stuff to go with. And recently, because I've never played the uh, the remake with the Japanese dub until, like, I started recently, a little bit ago, and uh, I saw on YouTube the axe ending uh, with the Japanese dub and the Japanese voice actor for Junpei lets out a really good scream. It's really good. I'd suggest checking it out. Anyways, uh, we got the funny answer of the Funyurinpa. Uh, and we got the dog, which is the correct answer. Although some may answer Funyurinpa is the true answer. But, eh. uh, I remember on my first playthrough of this game, I thought that it looked like a person's face with like a Viking helmet. Like, there's an eye over here, eye over here, that little triangle could be like a nose or a mouth, and then these were like the horns of a viking helmet or something like that. So I'll just say a man's face. A man's face. This is the head, this is the nose, this is the mouth. Junpei pointed to what he was talking about. Nope. That's wrong. Lotus smiled triumphantly. Wrong Spike Chun for soft series. It's a dog. See? Like this. One thing that I've noticed about swear words, at least when I say them, is, or at least in my opinion, feels so much more intense, the swear words do, when they're censored for some reason. Like, recently I was making a YouTube short and it was of that scene with Santa and the stove where he puts his hand on the stove and he says fuck. And when you just say, when I just say it, it doesn't sound too, it doesn't really sound like much. It just, you know, sounds like a word. But I, uh, for the short, I decided to go ahead and censor that. And for some reason, at least to me, it sounded a lot more, like, it had a lot more impact. I guess it's just because, since it's censored, my brain immediately was like, oh, well this is censored, which means it's something bad, and it like tricked my brain into thinking it was like, something much worse, I don't know. I don't really have an answer for that, it's just weird. Anyways, I went ahead and looked at the wick- oh. Oh! That's actually really cool! Uh. I forgot about this. If you say that you believe in curses uh, during the first escape room, this, in the second escape room, June will bring that up. But Jumpy, you said you believe in curses. Come on, that's totally different. I mean, being possessed by your own self from the future or whatever she was trying to say, uh, isn't that much different from curses they're both in my opinion the same level of weird anyways getting locked in the freezer once more we just 
cannot stop going into this freezer, apparently. Now, there's something that I want to click on in just a second. It just takes a little bit to skip through all of this dialogue. So, let me click on this. So much stuff in here. There we go! A storage area. What the hell is a storage area? There are a couple bottles in here. Storage. Got the rope, the bottle, several pieces of meat. Don't take that out of context. Yeah, there are a few funny typos in this game and a few funny dialogue choices for examining certain stuff. I went ahead and looked at the wiki to see if there were any funny bits that I should go ahead and check out, anything that I missed. So that's uh, how I got uh, the idea to look at the whole science boy thing during the eighth door. Anyways, we're once again going to ignore these guys talking about science. I don't care about your ice. To quote the theme song of Sonic from Sonic Adventure, it doesn't matter. One thing that I get anxious about whenever I'm making YouTube videos and stuff like that is talking about other YouTubers and other content creators and other people on the internet because I always have the fear that they either have done something or are about to or are about to be exposed for doing something that I just didn't know about and I'm gonna be like oh yeah this is a really cool content creator uh, here's you know a thing they did make sure to go check them out and then like three days later it's gonna turn out that they like I don't know, murdered someone or something like that, or did something worse. Anyways, I, I'd say I've gotten pretty quick at speed running through these uh, rooms here because we're 20 minutes into the episode, not even, and we've already gotten through all of the stuff behind the, behind the four door. Need to click on that again. Uh, another thing that I can compliment the remake about, uh, because I feel like uh, in a previous video I was way too negative on it, and all and although I'm not a really a big fan about it, there are a few things to like, like, um, and this is a very small thing, but I was replaying through it recently, and I was using the I found that it was really like easy to use the pointer that you use to click on stuff in the remake is very satisfying and easy to use. Uh, I haven't played Virtue's Last Reward in a little bit, but I remember that sometimes the pointer there would be a bit, like, a bit too fast at some points. Uh, looking around rooms in that game with a controller is very satisfying, and in Virtue's Last Reward I remember that sometimes the pointer was a bit too fast for my liking. Uh, which is, you know, fine, because obviously with the PC port of Virtue's Last Reward, you can just click on stuff with a mouse. Uh, but hey, that is one positive for the 999 remake. Another thing I kind of get anxious about is my older videos, my older YouTube videos on this channel. Uh, let's go back to the large hospital room. Huh? Why would we go back? Well, I mean, we might have just missed him, you know? Maybe he really was just late. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Okay, let's go. They turned and ran down the hallway to their right. So yeah, if you immediately go back to the hall, the, to the uh, hospital room, you actually get some extra dialogue there. So yeah, my older videos suck. Uh, I'm not as proud of them uh, as I am some of my more recent videos. I feel until like my mother won Let's Play, uh, I wasn't really confident with the videos I'm making, so if you're thinking of going back and watching my previous Let's Plays, I'd say Mother 1 is the farthest back that I would want you to go, because before that I'm not really proud of those videos. Uh, you know, I was in... I was fans of games that I'm no longer fans of anymore. But yeah, I feel with Mother 1... From there, I started to really improve on my videos, and I felt a lot happier and happier as things kept going. 
uh, and now we're here, and this Let's Play that we're doing right now is something that I am very proud of. And you know what? Uh, just because, you know, we've already had like two videos of me just skipping through text, I'm gonna give you guys an extra treat. This video is gonna be an extra long one, and we're actually going to go through a door this time. This time, we are going to do a risky play. Lotus wants to go through door 8, Seven wants to go through door 7, and so before, those were the only doors that we could really go through because, you know, it makes sense because we could only split into two groups, so it wouldn't really make sense to try to go through the door 3. But now, let's try going through. I want to go through door number 3. No, you can't. Huh? Why? Because it's impossible. If we split ourselves up into three and three, then we give up on going through door three. Why? The bracelet numbers for the six of us are three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are two combinations that can go through door three with three people. Three, four, five, or six, seven, eight. That's it. Of course, two teams can't go through the same door. I see. That means one team would be left behind. That's right. That doesn't happen if we go through door seven or eight? No, they're fine. We've got three options. Santa began to explain. Plan A. Go through door 7 with 358. Go through door 8 with 467. Plan B. Go through door 7 with 457 and go through door 8 with 368. Plan C. Go through door 7 with 367 and go through door 8 with 458. Those are the only three options. That's it. At least if we want to get all six of us out of here. That was when Junpei realized. Plan A divides into two teams, 358 and 467. Plan B divides into two teams, 457 and 368. Plan C divides into two teams, 367 and 458. There was one thing they all had in common. In every single combination, 5 and 6 were never on the same team. In other words, if all 6 people were to move forward, Junpei and Jun would be separated. Jun and Junpei had been friends when they were kids. He trusted her more than anyone else on the ship. If he chose seven or eight, he'd be taken away from her. Was that something he was prepared to do? Anyway, that's the deal, so think it over. You've got two choices, seven or eight. You can't choose three. If you choose three, you're going to be leaving three people behind to die. So what are you going to do? Seven or eight, time to choose. Junpei thought hard. After thinking it over, his conclusion was... And we have three options once more. Door 7, Door 8, and take the risk and choose Door 3. This is the game telling you, hey, are you absolutely sure that you want to do this? Because, you know, with Door 3, you do get to go through with June, but that means you are risking way more people than, abs than absolutely necessary. The reason we're leaving Ace behind is specifically so that we don't have to sacrifice too many people. Choosing door 3 completely throws that in everyone's face, and just defies any and all logic. Let's take door 3, though. Sorry, Santa, but I still want to go through door 3. What? That's nuts! You've got to be crazy! Why the hell are you so obsessed with that door? I'm just... Junpei paused. Uh, interesting thing to note is that is also the door where Snake is found dead. He swallowed the words he'd been about to say. I'm just curious about door three. That's all. That doesn't explain shit. I've got a reason. I'd be happy to explain it to you if you'll just come with me. With that, he began walking toward the door. Their curiosity likely getting the better of them, the others followed. A few of them looked a little suspicious, but Junpei told himself that wouldn't matter. He kept walking and kept silent. Eventually, they arrived at the number three door. Junpei stopped. I'm curious about the red. Seven, would you mind authenticating for me? Huh? Huh? Why? Please, just do it. He stared at Junpei for a moment, then grunted and laid his palm heavily on the scanner. Happy? Yeah, thanks. The number seven had been entered into the red. Next is Jun. Please touch the red, just like Seven did. 
Jumpy, wh what are you trying to figure out? Junpei thought about his answer for a moment. I think I might have found another way out. Huh? What? Really? That got them excited, just as Junpei had intended. Now, please, Jun. Uh, okay. 7 plus 6 equals 13, 1 plus 3 equals 4. Those two numbers in the red, Junpei had, w had what he wanted. He casually placed his own hand on the scanner, and the third asterisk blinked on. 4 plus 5 equals 9. Alright, the only people who have an authenticated now are Santa, Clover, and Lotus. So, what's your point? You don't get it? Think about it. Hmm? What's the sum of your numbers? What's the sum of your number and Clover's? Twelve. And what's the digital root of that? Three. Which is Santa's number. By the way, Lotus, what's the number that's currently in the red? Seven plus six plus five equals eighteen. It would be nine, right? Yes. And what will the digital root be if you add three to that? Three. The door's number. There you go. Hey, wait a minute! What the hell are you up to? I'm not up to anything. I'm just waiting. Waiting for what? I'm waiting for the balance to shift. Santa, or Lotus and Clover. Once, once one of you moves, the others won't have a choice. So I'm waiting. Junpei laid his hand almost casually on the lever. Y you son of a bitch! You tricked us! Then all that stuff you were going on about is all bullshit! Bullshit? I don't think so. Didn't I tell you that I figured out another way to get out of the here? Out of here? This is it. Why the hell would you do something like this? Jinpei glanced at June. Jumpy, you did this just so you could get through the same door as June? That's it? Santa was furious. His face was red, and flecks of spit flew from his lips as he spoke. Jinpei closed his eyes calmly and then opened them again. So, who's it gonna be? Santa? Or Lotus and Clover? Shit! We're going! Clover! Lotus leapt forward. She grabbed Clover by the sleeve and ran for Junpei in the door. Caught by surprise, Santa froze for a moment and shot forward like a bullet from a gun. Lotus had a head start, but Santa had the advantage in size and speed. Almost immediately, he passed Lotus and Clover. No! Wait! Santa did not hesitate. Uh, he slammed his hand down on the, on the red. This is insane! This isn't right! He glared at Junpei, his chest heaving. Yes, well, you may be right. Junpei's voice was cold, but not without effort. He turned to the red and pulled the lever. With the sound of metal on metal, the door opened. It would only remain so for nine seconds. There was no time to think. Go! Junpei and his three reluctant companions jumped in the do into the door's gaping mouth, one after another. No sooner did they enter than an all too familiar noise sounded from their left wrists. The detonators had activated. Junpei looked back only once and saw Lotus and Clover on the other side of the closing door. They stood still, stopped where they had been when Santa reached the red. The defeat and desperation on their faces tore at Junpei's heart. Then the door closed and they were gone. You son of a bitch, Junpei! This isn't fair! Santa rounded on Junpei, lightning crackling in his eyes and his knuckles white. Do you realize what you just did? You leave them out there and they can't... Shut it! That's enough! It hadn't been Junpei that spoke, but Seven. We gotta find the dead, or none of this is gonna matter. The clock was ticking. The dead was their only chance at survival. Unless they could find it and deactivate their detonators, the four of them would be... We got less than a minute left. No time for screwing around. Get moving. They scattered and began to scour the room. The deactivation device was nowhere to be found. Quarters stretched out in three directions, but everyone was blocked off by a wall of metal. There was only one way out. One other door. Dare! Seven ran for the door, a rusty iron thing. His large hands grabbed hold of the handle and pulled. The room inside was pitch black. 
They could see nothing beyond the small patch of light that spilled through the doorway. Junpei stuck his head through the door and looked around the room. Almost immediately, he spotted the blinking red light in the right wall. I found it! The dead's right over here! He stepped into the room and nearly fell down. The floor was slippery. W what? He stopped and glanced. He stopped and glanced down at his feet. What was. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Get over there! Junpei felt Seven's heavy hand against his back and stumbled across the room. The other three piled in behind him. They all felt immediately that something was wrong. Nothing that could be easily identified, only a sense that something terrible shared the room with them. But there was no time to say so. Quick! Get out! Get to the dead! They all started running. In the dark, it was hard to tell where the wall was. All they could see was the tiny red light blinking at them over and over and over. Then finally, suddenly, they were there. In quick succession, they all slammed their hands against the scanner panel. Seven leaned against the wall, gulping air. As his breathing began to return to normal, he glanced at his left wrist and grunted. It stopped! It stopped! <laughs> Junpei could hear him laughing in the dark, but could barely make out the larger man's face. What the? <laughs> the sound of retching came from Sansa's direction. What the hell's the smell? This is vile! I'm gonna puke! So desperate had they been in their race to the dead that no one had noticed the horrible smell that pervaded the room. It was a terrible, nauseating stench, like burnt and rotten meat. Adrenaline had drowned it out, but now it rolled over Junpei in waves, forcing itself into his nose with every breath he took. He felt his stomach clench and bile rise up in his throat. Let's get the lights on first. There's a switch over here. The light that spilled in front of the door barely illuminated a small switch plate next to the door. Slowly, with the toll of the last few minutes apparent in his gait, Seven walked toward it. He stopped as he got close and extended his fingers toward the switch. There was a soft click as the lights came on. It had scarcely faded when another noise pierced the air. A scream. Junpei's breath stopped in his throat. His heart ceased to beat. Time froze. His mind scrambled to make sense of what he saw before him. What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh torn from the body sat in the blood like tiny isles in a great red sea. A vast, ragged hole had been torn in the torso, and what remained of his intestines spilled out of it like fresh spaghetti. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and become stuck there as they dried. Globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried to it. Looks like an explosion. Seven's voice was low and strained, just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. It looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent in an odd and natural way, and his left arm had split open, exposing the painfully white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to have shattered the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Half of his head had simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes, too, were covered in blood. The burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with the yellow piping, and the gray slacks. They were all familiar to Junpei. Is that... Snake? Sansa's voice wavered as he spoke. His mouth was dry. Oh my god. Finally, Junpei spoke. Why did this happen? No! Suddenly, Jun was screaming, her voice broken. It was an eerie scream, full of insanity, and not entirely human. No! 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 She shook her head violently and grabbed fistfuls of her own hair. Junpei could hear the sound of hair tearing. No! Stop it, Jun! He grabbed her wrist. But as he did, Jun leapt up and ran. Toward the exit. 
Please, get me out of here! You have to let me out of here! She screamed at the door and her fist slammed against it with a hollow sound. Junpei could see drops of blood on her knuckles. Why are you doing these horrible things to us? What do we do to deserve this? She screamed again, a desperate, mindless cry. Her fist flailed against the door. Get me out of here! Please! Please, just get me out! Junpei couldn't watch anymore. He ran to Jun and wrapped his arm around her, pulling the screaming girl away from the door. No! No! Get off of me! Let me go! Let me go! She scrambled for a moment, her legs skittering across the floor, but her resistance didn't last long. Suddenly, as the outburst had begun, it was over. The manic energy disappeared, and her body went limp in Junpei's arms. Jun collapsed toward the floor, and Junpei knelt down with her. He felt drops of something warm and wet. Was she... crying? A moment later, she began to sob. Her shoulders shook, and great hot tears rolled down her face like rain. We're gonna be fine. It's gonna be alright, June. It's going to be okay, Connie. Her name was a whisper. I'll be here with you, okay? She nodded once. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Her trembling voice pulled at Junpei's heart. He stroked her hair gently. His face was so close to her. The scent of her hair was nostalgic. Do you feel better? Yes. But I'd like to stay here. For a little while, at least. Jumpy's body is so warm. Several minutes passed before June's tears had dried. Junpei stood up. He bent down, put his arms under June's, and helped her to her feet. They didn't speak. Neither did Seven or Santa. A person was dead. They died in that room, in a terrible way. Junpei knew there was no way he could make himself forget that. There was no way any of them could forget it, but mourning would do no good. They spread out to search the room, but each felt as if their heart was made of lead. Jesus, a lot is happening this time around, and we're going to see everything that happens after this in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!